Alright, it's on. That me or you? That's me. Good show. Keith is watching. And Keith's on time. <laughs> Uh, Patrick's watching. Mark Patrick. Williamson's watching. Patrick Robinson? Yeah, okay. Keith said nice shirt. Oh, cool. All right, we'll get my thing I'm so working on it. it. Hush. Mark Williamson said nice shirt, too. <laughs> Oh, he's TFO too. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of TFO, a lot of Semperfly going on with Dorvice. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share it? With yeah. That? Can you share it with your phone? Dave Kerr. Dave Kerr is watching. Terry Landry, they finally opened fishing here. Cool. My friend from Chile, Pat O'Neill is watching. Melbourne, Australia. Hey, Chris, what's up, bud? Brittany Davenport. How's the cat? Salvetti Brian Davenport. <laughs> OGS is on. Just just so you know, just so we're all good, OGS is Where's on. Where's EGS at? I, I don't know where EGS is. It loves, but the cat loves Brian. Kitchener, Ontario. Fred Deweese. Chris Harris. You see the video of Fred losing that gigantic mm -hmm. snakehead? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did, I you thought... know, he landed it first, all right? I... <laughs> Hey, what's up, Chris? I, I felt bad. No, he got he got it in he the He got it in the boat and he's trying to get a picture of it and can't get the boga in the mouth. Oh, and the, I didn't see And that. the thing flipped out of the boat oh, into the water. I, I saw It's like a ten pound fish. I saw he missed it with the net and then when he got it in the boat, it was in the kayak between his legs. I figured that was it. I didn't realize that it had flopped back. No, he's trying to hit oh, it with the boga sucks. grip and he couldn't get the jaws open and the thing flopped out of the boat. And that sucks. Hey Jake, what's up? He said nice walleye. Who did? Fred did. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was cool, man. First walleye. First walleye ever. Larry. Nova Scotia. How's your head feeling, Tyler? I'm fine, Chris. Why did he say LOL? Um, I don't know. What I... Hey, Vinny, what's up? Your light's on its way, bud. Hey, Jock. TFO says nice shirt. Oh, TFO's watching? It's, uh, Jake said nice shirt. Okay. I saw the TFO one. 
Mac Brown. Hey, Mac, what's up? Seven oh one. Is it seven oh one? With eighty five people, so go okay. ahead. All right. before we start to drop off. <laughs> all right, guys. How are y'all doing? Here it is uh, Sunday again at 7 o'clock, and y'all are with us. We're up to 86 people or so. Um, that's great. Um, I'm glad that we're kind of starting a pattern here, and uh, you guys are getting accustomed to, uh, to coming in and checking us out on Sunday nights. Um, this, this is going to be the last one that I'm going to do for a couple of weeks. Uh, next week we're going to hop over to, um, uh, Brittany Davenport is going to do one from out in Idaho. And then the week after that, uh, Braden Miller is going to do one down in, um, down in Virginia. And then we'll see, we don't really have the schedule set past that, but, um, you guys are going to get to see, you know, a bunch of different things. Some of the ambassadors do some different things. Um, which is, uh, which is cool. Steve Williams says we're Monday now. <laughs> it's, it's Monday out there. So, uh, okay, hold on. Apparently Brayden is next week and Brittany is the week after that. I guess I messed that up. So either way, we'll have it figured out, but there'll be somebody here from Norvice, uh, seven o'clock on Sunday. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just keep, uh, keep forging ahead. So March Madness came to an end, um, Thursday, Thursday night at seven o'clock, and uh, Jock Scott wound up winning the uh, the entire competition. He posted a absolutely phenomenal um, classically tied salmon fly. Um, it it was just it was just a beautiful beautiful fly, and he went against Terry Landry, who if if you remember Terry did the frog the week before. And this week he did a um, did a hummingbird, which which was super super cool. And the final round honestly was exactly what I wanted. They were two very different styles of fly, um, tied by two fantastic tires. Either one of them could have won, and it was you know best on best. And they they tied their best fly, submitted it, and we put them up there. And as soon as we put them up, the votes started going absolutely crazy. And Wednesday afternoon, it became apparent that we were going to have a bit of an issue because we didn't realize this, but Facebook, when you go over a thousand likes, it doesn't go to a thousand and one, a thousand and two, a thousand and three. It goes to 1.0 K. And then when you hit 1100, it goes to 1.1 K. So we never thought that, that we would um, get votes and, and get voting numbers in up, up over a thousand. Um, so we had we were scrambling a bit there on um, on Thursday afternoon to uh, figure out who was going to be the winner. Um, like I said, Jock wound up winning. If you haven't seen the fly, it's on the home page of the Norvice website. I put it up there this afternoon. So right where the the brackets for the March Madness were. And, and they had been for the last several weeks. Um, Jock's fly is up there. So if you haven't if you haven't seen it, and I can't imagine that you haven't, but if you haven't, go check it out. It, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, they Jock's fly received seventeen hundred and change votes, seventeen hundred and forty, I think it was. And Terry's fly received almost fifteen hundred. And like I said, in our wildest dreams, we never thought that they would. Um, that they would go that high. Um, the cool thing for us, Facebook has one of their um, th their things that they use to count posts. They call it, it's called an impression, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So an impression, the best way that I can describe it is if you're driving down the road and you look at a billboard as you're driving by, that's an impression. So a Facebook impression would be if you're scrolling through your news feed and you see that post and, and it scrolls past. Um, as of this morning, we looked and we were over a hundred thousand impressions for that one post. So over a hundred thousand people saw the two flies that Jock and Terry tied. Um, just phenomenal. So 
Thank you guys. Corinne Kerr's watching too. Corinne Kerr's watching. <laughs> hey, Corinne, how are you? Thank you guys for um, for making that competition, you know, more than than what we ever dreamed. And we threw it together literally in two days. So um, Jock, he won a five hundred dollar gift certificate and a year contract to be on the Norvice Pro Tires team. Um, he filled out, sent his contract in today. I have it. We're going to put his um, his picture up on the site sometime this week. Um, and then for Terry, we from the start, we, we had decided it was going to be a winner-take-all, and we were going to put up the gift certificate, and that was going to be it, and whoever won, won. And as we got going into this, and, and you kind of develop a relationship with people, and looking at the work that Terry submitted, we, we could not just in good faith have him walk away empty-handed. And he just as easily could have won the final round. So we offered Terry a uh, $200 gift certificate, which he jumped on um, <laughs> very quickly. Your order's filled. Uh, he's already ordered his stuff. It's already filled. It's going to go out uh, tomorrow. So good stuff. Um, Chris, Christopher Duggan, thank you so much for all the help that, um, that you provided with this. I could not have done this without you. I don't know if you have. I'm a little behind on messages. If you haven't sent me your address, Chris, and your shirt size, send it to me. I've got a care package that's going to go out to you, and i just got to get the postage label on it and get it mailed out. So thank you very much. And for everybody, all the people that, uh, that participated, um, everybody that was involved in March Madness, thank you so much. It was more than we ever could have hoped for, and we're, we're going to do it again next year. So, you know, if you're interested, just stick around. We'll start putting it out probably around Christmas time. Um, I do want to do a full field of 64 tires. Uh, it's going to be a lot more work for us. I'm perfectly fine with that, uh, but I want to expose as many people to this as we can. So, uh, thank you guys, and we're going to go on to tying our first fly. So, we did the, the, the question and answer contest two weeks ago, and we kind of had a little... Um, a little uh, hiccup in the in the voting, so to speak, and we didn't realize that not all of the comments are coming through real time, and it it depends on where you are geographically in relationship to us as to how fast or how slow your comment makes it up onto the screen. And we we uh, we had a couple of people that technically should have won. And their comments showed up later. So we, we sent everybody prizes. Everybody was happy. But last week, we forgot to do the question. So this week, we're going to do it. But we're going to wait um, till the end. And then we'll be able to see all the comments and the time that they were posted. And whoever is uh, first, we're going to give you a Norvice t-shirt. All right? So I'm going to get set up. We're going to tie the first fly here. And then I'm going to ask the question. You guys uh, will have whoever's the first one to answer. It's going to win. So, you want to move the camera? Yeah. Okay. Marcus Von Baldwin said, what in the eastern part of the USA is going on here? What in the eastern part of the USA is going on? It's just a weird Canadian. Yeah. All right. So, hopefully you won't get too seasick with moving the camera. It's about as good as it's going to get. Mm, good. Did you say weird Canadian? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is not. It's focused on me, not the. Um... Well, when you put a fly in there, and there's something else. Um... There's more going on in the back than in the front. Now it's focused on the hook. Good. Yep. Oh, Jack Walsh. Hey, Jack. What's up? Okay. So this first pattern, what we have on tap, we've got three flies on tap tonight. Um, hopefully we'll get to all three of them. This first one is called a waltz worm. And 
th there are several different varieties of this particular tie. This is the one that I use. This is the one that was taught to me. Um, what Casey Miller says, Bennett asked me to say hi to Mr. Tim for him. Oh, how you doing, Ben? Um, that's <laughs> Marcus funny. goes, they don't get our sorry culture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Walt's worm. Um, this is how I learned how to tie it. There, there are several versions of this. There's the sexy waltz that has a bead and some pink thread on it. This is, as far as I know, the, the original version of the fly. It is two materials. It is dead simple. And it is a um, absolutely killer trout fly. So the, the, the three that we have on tap for today, they're all nymphs. And they're all um, flies that I would use as an anchor in a three fly rig and typically when I'm nymphing for trout I will typically throw three flies um, check your local regulations make sure you're allowed to throw uh, three flies but this would be when I say anchor fly these would be the flies that have the most amount of weight to them that would help sink the rig down in the water so the question is and it's a two-part question number one what is the name of the gentleman who invented this pattern called the Waltz worm his full name and number two where did he originate it from? And what I mean by that, I will accept one of two things. I will accept the river that he designed this pattern for, and it is a, a um, world-renowned river, or I will accept the geographical location. So the name of the guy who invented the pattern and the name of the river or the geographical location where he invented this. All right. So we've got the, a, the first one to comment that we'll go back through afterwards and choose the first person that commented and got that right. And then we'll contact you and send you out a t-shirt. Okay. So this is a Mustad, um, 79, I believe it is a three XL streamer hook. This is a size, uh, I believe this is size six. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do, I got some Semper Fly. This is actually um, this is actually three aught thread, and and I don't normally use. It is rare that I would use three aught thread when I'm tying a trout fly, but it will become very apparent why I am doing that here in a second. So we're going to tie on, and you see I've tied on at the back of the fly, and we have some 025 or 25 thousandths lead wire that I just dropped on the floor. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to tie this in actually, yeah, I'm going to tie it in this way. I'm going to tie it in at the rear of the hook and I'm just going to let that lead hang there. I'm going to work this up to the front of the fly and I'm going to throw a half hitch in it. There. When you're tying, it focuses on the fly. Mm -hmm. When you're not, it focuses on the TFO label. Okay, so now... I'm going to wrap this, and, and this is why I put my lead on a bobbin, so that I can just, just lay it on the shank and wrap it forward. See how that goes on nice and easy. Now, I don't want to get too close to the eye of the hook, so I want to be at least one hook eye diameter back, because I have to build a taper and I have to build a head on this. So now what I'm going to do, we've wrapped the lead up the shank. Now... I'm going to hop up on top of the lead wraps that I just laid down. Now I'm going to wrap back towards the back halfway. And what we're doing, we're using this lead underbody to create the shape that we want. Terry goes, TFO paid for intermission sponsors. <laughs> because when you're not tying, it goes back to the logo. <laughs> and now we're going to pull that off. So... I tie it on at the back, and I rarely tie the lead on, but for this pattern I do because I want to start at the back, and I want to wrap forward. Okay, you need to leave a little space up here. So we're going to wrap forward. Then I'm going to hop the lead up on top of the layer underneath it, and I'm going to wrap back down. So you've got a double layer of lead right here. Okay, this is going to help us build the shape that we're looking for in this fly. This is why I use 3X thread on this, because now what I have to do... I have to come in here and I have to build a thread taper here, here, and here. And with, with 8-odd, it takes a really, really long time. Um, 
So I've got my, this is, like I said, it's 3 out Semperfly Classic um, Wax Thread. And now this is where the rotary function of the Norvice really comes into play. So I'm just going to work this back and forth. Now see how I built the thread taper there? Now I'm going to get to the middle of the fly, and I'm going to work it back and forth. And I'm going to build my thread taper there. Now I'm going to go to all the way to the back, and again back and forth. And work my thread taper there. So see what we've done is we've used the lead underbody and we've used the thread to create a cigar shape. Okay. Now I'm going to half hitch it. And Jackson, if you're watching, this is the dubbing technique that we were talking about here a second ago. So we've got some hairs here, number one. I might have to go get one of your jackets for you or something. It, Why? Because when it's on, look at it, it the whole thing's blurred when. All right, well, it's focusing on the logo, is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, it's focusing right, on the logo. So. But if your hands are behind the fly, it'll focus on the fly. Okay, well, let's see. So now I got some hairs here, number one. I'm going to tease that out. I've got my bobbin on my cradle. This is a fly that actually takes a lot of dubbing. Has anybody answered the question yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people answered the question. Okay. Is it correct? Because there's the answer up there. Right there. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple that have said that creek. Okay. Well, it, it's it been answered. So. Okay. All right. So the, the answer, I just don't want to give it away if it hasn't been correctly answered. The answer is that the gentleman's name is Walt Young. And the the area or river, it was, uh, he designed this pattern to fish Spring Creek. I also saw Central Altoona, PA come through. Yeah, and that's, and it's, I would, it's the same And, and Altoona, and then I've, there's a lot of Juniata being thrown around. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, so so Walt Young, Spring Creek, or Central PA was, was what I was going for. All right, so I got my dubbing teased out. Okay, I'm going to spin the thread. I'm going to touch the dubbing to the thread, and I typically do this, this particular fly, in little sections because this is more dubbing than than you will ever use on like a standard dry fly or or um or nymph body and we'll just keep picking little pieces yeah it's about as far as i'm gonna be able to fit. yeah it looks the same all the way up and that's where the rotary function of the vise and the dubbing technique comes into play. I got one little thin spot there. I'm not really looking for a tapered um, dubbing noodle here. This is pretty much the same thickness all the way around. And I'm going to just tighten it up a little bit. Now I'm going to reach under here, come off of my cradle, work my way to the back of the fly. And then this is why we don't need to really taper or do anything to the, uh, to the dubbing because we've already built the taper in our underbody. So we're just going to wrap this up. Usually I can get it in one. There we go. Okay. You want it buggy. You want it to have guard hairs out all over the place. This is a crane fly larva pattern. And the trout just absolutely annihilate this thing. And it's two materials, dubbing and thread well dubbing and lead um they do crane fly typically do have a little bit of a, of a darker brown or a, a black head on them so i'm going to tease out just a little bit of black dubbing this is hair's ear uh, plus in black spin that on the thread tighten it up come off the cradle And there you go. And I'm going to whip finish. I moved all my stuff around and now I can't find it. You mean you cleaned up? I cleaned up, yeah. Yeah, it's struggling to not focus on the logo. All right, well, if I need to change, I can change. that off 
Then I'm going to come in here with my little Velcro, Velcro brush that my buddy Tony Muncy sent out to me. And we're just going to brush this out a little bit. We want it to be, we want the guard hairs to kind of be all over the place. Kind of give it the old bad hair day look. And there you go. That is the, as far as I understand it, the traditionally tied um, waltz worm. Great, great pattern. Trout will absolutely annihilate it. It's it's a good pattern to, that you can get a lot of lead into. Um, so it will really, really sink your nymph rig uh, effectively. So it works as double duty. It'll sink the rig, but it will also catch a ton of fish. So there is your waltz worm. Any questions on that? Fire them away. Light. Wrong way. Well, right way. Too far. Yeah, too far. Okay. Okay. Looks great with the solid blue background. Okay. Yeah, you can turn the shirt around and it'll look pretty good. It, it has power to the angler on the back. Yeah, but that's up yeah. here, not here. All right, so any questions on that pattern, fire them away. I'll uh, give you a little bit to get caught up here. Nothing. What's the red thing on your bobbin? Uh, the. If you're talking about this piece, it's it's a hackle guard. We get that question every week. And what it is, it's one of our bobbin tips that um th that go on that they protect the ceramic tube they also um pinch the thread in between the the uh, cap and the and the tube so that the bobbin will stay under tension you cut them off and you make a little plastic donut out of them and you use it to um when you're finishing off a hackle collared fly you can slide it up onto the fly to get the fibers out of the way to do your whip finish and then slide it back down so could you do it on a curve hook uh you could you absolutely could. We're going to tie on a curved hook here. Uh, the last pattern that we do is going to be on a curved hook. Typically, like I said, the, the traditionally tied waltz worm was on a straight shanked, uh, I believe, a 3XL hook. Um, the the variations, that there's the sexy waltz. that They tie them on jig hooks. They tie them on curved shanked hooks. But to my knowledge, this, this one right here that I just tied is the original true to the pattern um, waltz worm. I don't know if the original had the black head on it. I just kind of add that because I think it looks cool. But it's it's lead and dubbing, and that's it. All right. When putting dubbing on the thread, you mentioned tightening. Can you please explain? Uh, okay. I'm going to use that junk hook. No, I'm going to use this one. Actually, I'll use this one that's right here. And then while you're doing that, what's the smallest size you would tie that in? Uh, this one, the crane fly larvae are pretty big. You could do the, the same thing in, in a caddis larva and tie it down in like a 14. It would be hard to get the lead to do the, the double wrap of lead on it. So you would have to do your taper a different way, which I actually show you. Um, but yeah, that, that is typically a six or an eight. And if you've ever seen them, crane fly larva are, I mean, they're big. They're like, like the end of your, of your pinky finger. Um, and if you're in a river where they're abundant, trout eat on them like, like they're candy. All right, so when I say tightening the dubbing, uh, I'll use this one. Who is that? Did Jackson answer that? Rich Stanhope. Okay. Richard Stanhope. All right. The the little, the, the kid that got the the vice that I was talking to the mom. Oh, he okay. He emailed me right before this, and he said, hey, I'm having trouble doing the dubbing. And I said, well, well you know, log on, because we're going to do a, a live, and I'm going to be dubbing. So, all right, so I got a little bit of dubbing here. And I'll spin the vise, I'll touch the dubbing to the thread, and I'll work it. Now, you can see how it's on there, but you can see how it's kind of loose. It's not really packed down tight. Now, sometimes you may want that, and sometimes you may not. So if I want to tighten it up, I'm going to pinch the thread right here. And what that does, that only allows this section of thread, wherever I pinch it, it's only that section of thread from the hook to where I pinch it is going to spin. So I'm going to pinch it here. I'm only going to spin this portion of thread and then see how it tightens that up. Now the core is it's tight. It's really it, hard to see with that logo. And it makes the, um, 
and it makes the guard hairs pop. So there you go. Um, Shannon Messer, we tied them down to size 18 jig hooks for trout in Western North Carolina. There you go. All right, so let me, um, it's apparently that the logo is in the way, so let me do this. This one will be a little easier for you to see. Oh, Jim Benzinger's watching. Hey, Jim, what's up? We tied with your stuff last week, buddy. You missed it. Oh, uh, this one. Okay. All right, so here, if, if I do it with a different color dubbing, you may be able to see it a little better. All right, so this is dry fly dubbing, so you can see. Do you want to move that camera in so they can see it? You need to put a different shirt on. Okay, well. Casey Miller's texting me saying you need to put a different shirt on. Okay. It's bad. All right, well, just, I guess, bear with me. I'll run upstairs and put I, a different shirt on. I'll do the whole fly or the second thing in between the flies while you're gone. All right, so the logo was kind of messed up, and you couldn't really see the fly right on his. Since you're not really looking at the fly with mine, then it's not going to matter that much. So the second talking point that he wanted to get into uh, before we move on to the next fly is the giveaway that we're doing with Fly Lords right now. So they're a fantastic company. We partner with them on Instagram. So in order to enter the giveaway, post a picture or a video of a creative fly that you tied. The more creative it is, the more points you're going to get and the better chance there is of winning. Post it on Instagram. Use the hashtag Norvice Core and Tie Contest. And you have to tag both Fly Lords and Instagram in the post. So if you tag both of us in the post, you go use the proper hashtags and you follow both accounts. You're then entered to win and you could win your own brand new Norvice. So, and it sounds like my dad's back. Done? Yeah, I covered the fly board. Yeah, that'll be a lot better. All right, so I just changed colors. Hey, you see it perfect now. Yeah. Mike Hawkins goes, good to see your face, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's red and sunburned from fishing yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... When uh, somebody asked about tightening up the dubbing, if I put the light on, will that show it a little better? Is that better? A uh, little bit, because the fibers catch the light, okay. so you can see if it's buggy All or right, not. so you can see in in this area right here, you can see how the dubbing is on the thread, but it's it's loose. It's it's not packed down tight, and this, this is dry fly dubbing. Typically, when we're doing a dry fly, we want it to... Um, to be tight and packed and, and nice and smooth. So I've dubbed the way that we would normally dub on, on the Norvice. Now I want to tighten it up. <laughs> Terry goes round two belongs to Sims. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to change sponsors, yeah, guys. Yeah, we had to change sponsors mid-show. Uh, mid, mid it's like when uh, you take a picture with a fish and then you got to put a different yeah. hat on kind of thing. All right, so I'm going to pinch it here. And what that does, when I pinch the thread here, it only allows the thread from the eye of the hook to where I pinched it to spin. This thread out here is, is not going to spin. So I'm going to pinch it at the end of the noodle, and then I'm going to take and I'm going to spin the vise. Now watch what it does, especially right in this area right here. See how it takes in, and it drew the dubbing down and it tightened it up. Now I'm not going to let go. I'm going to reach under here. Imagine that this is a size 14 dry fly hook. I'm going to work my way to the back. Now I'm going to start forward. And, and if you've noticed, the, the dubbing noodle gets thicker as it goes forward. That's I built the taper in to the noodle so I don't have to wrap back and forth over top of, of, my, uh, of my previous wraps. And there's how you build a nice tapered um, abdomen of your dry fly. If you were doing a nymph, you, you would do the same technique um, but you would use a different type of dubbing. But when, when I say I tighten it up, that's that's what I mean by tighten it up. So you pinch the thread at the end of the noodle, spin the vise, and it'll draw the dubbing down tighter. 
So hopefully that uh, that answered your question. I guess just move into the next fly. I covered the fly lords thing. All right, so fly lords we did. All right. Um, okay, any questions on that? Did you spin towards or away from you? Does it matter? Yes, it does matter. Okay, very good question. First thing, whenever, whenever you go on your bob and cradle, you want a half hitch, okay? Um, the reason being, if for some reason, if the thread were to hop off, it could start unwinding itself as, as you're spinning and dubbing or doing peacock curl or whatever. Okay, so when you think about in the world of fly tying, 90% of what we do goes over the shank of the hook. So when you're wrapping a thread, it goes over. When you're wrapping a body, it goes over the shank of the hook. So when you're rotary tying, you have to kind of think a little differently. So let me uh, let me throw the hook in for the next fly. And I'll get all zoomed in. Much better focus. It's not going in and out. There we go. Okay. So um, let me get my, I need my light on here. So let me get this down. Got a little discombobulated here, but I think, I think we're back on track. So how's that with the light? Um, I can use this same thread for this. Okay. Um, so what was I talking about? Oh, okay. So when... When we're wrapping over the shank of the hook, so I'm going to tie on and my thread is going over the hook, okay? If we want to duplicate that when we're tying, this becomes this. So I'm turning the vise toward me, or if you're looking at the front of the fly, it's going counterclockwise, okay? So I'm rotating the vise towards me. If you're counter wrapping a body or counter uh, wrapping a rib on a body, you would do just the opposite. You would wrap it away from you or clockwise if you're looking at the fly. So 90% of the time you wrap it towards you and on the odd time that you're counter wrapping something, you wrap it away from you. Okay, so hopefully that, that answered your question. All right, fly number two is a stone fly pattern. These are, all three of these flies are very, um, very generic, very easy to tie, what I call box fillers. And these, especially when you're tying nymphs, um, my opinion is you don't need to put a ton of detail in them. Um, tying cool looking flies is, is always nice, but if you're nymphing and you're nymphing correctly, you're going to lose a lot of flies. So I like to tie impressionistic patterns that are quick to tie because you can tie a bunch of them in one session, fill your box up, and then get back out on the water. All right, so this one, we've got the same hook. This is a um, uh, Mustad and... 79580? 79580, I believe. Size 8. Uh, size 8. It's a 3XL uh, streamer hook. And I've got a 3 um tungsten bead on here. So we're going to put, I'm going to take a little bit of lead, I'm going to run it through the hook eye, and I'm going to get on the back side of the bead, and I'm going to put about 8 to 10 wraps of lead on. Pinch that off. Come in here with my bodkin, I'm going to pull this out of the hook eye, and I'm going to use the vise, and I'm going to wrap this right up. So now I can take that lead, I can slide it up into the back of the bead. It's going to center the bead and it's going to push everything forward for me. Now I'm going to use the same thread. This is 3 out Semperfly um, classic, classic thread. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to build a thread taper here at the back. Okay, see how quick and easy that is? That's why I use on this pattern and the last pattern, that's why I use the, um, 
the three eighths or a three op thread. Now I'm going to work my way back here to just in front of the hook point, and I'm going to come in here with my pliers, and I am very carefully going to take this lead body. And I'm going to smash it down to give it the size or the kind of shape of a stonefly. So see how I smash that so it's wider than it is fat, and that's going to help when I uh, when I go to uh, when I go to wrap my my body. All right, so this is a product that's called Lifelex. It's a great durable leg material and basically what it is spandex so we're going to clip one off and I am going to I'm going to fold it in take my thread I'm going to bring it up on top And that, when I'm done, is going to be my tail. So I've got them tied in. Now I'm going to clip them off about right there. Okay. Now, don't throw these away. I'm going to wrap up to about the midpoint of the lead. And I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to turn the vise sideways. And I'm just going to take... And I'm going to come under the thread and right up onto the side of the lead. Put a couple wraps in there. Now I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Hey, Jason Randall's watching. Hey, Jason, what's up? And I do need to cut another one because I cut my first one kind of short. Jason, have you unboxed your birthday present yet? Yeah, I'm <laughs> okay, now... I've rotated the vise 90 degrees. This is a situation where the where the locking mechanism of the vise works to your advantage. I'm going to slide one leg underneath. And I'm going to put it right on the side of my lead body. And I'm going to put a couple wraps there. So now I've got my tail and my two legs on. Okay, now I've got to get back to the back of the fly. Sometimes these rubber legs can be a little ornery when you work with them. Now this is a this is a variegated chenille. It is um, it's uh, medium and it's brown and yellow. So this is going to be the body of our fly. Jason goes not yet. Second week of May. It's Second still boxed up. Oh my god! <laughs> That's got to be torture. So Jason Randall is a. Um, He's, he's very high up with TFO, and he his wife purchased for him a complete Norvice setup uh, back in February, I believe. And the deal is, it's his birthday present, and apparently he's not allowed to use it until his birthday in May. So he's had this... Um, for about a month and a half. For about a month and a half now, and... Um, it, he he hasn't. She, he hasn't he says she won't let me have it early. It's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I kind of screwed up here. I should have tied my chenille on before I put my rubber legs on, but we'll get through it. Yeah. Mental note: If you're tying this pattern at home, put your chenille on before you tie your rubber legs on, because you get your legs trapped underneath your your thread wraps, and you got a problem. There we go. Yeah, we were just talking about you yesterday, Jason. Like, I wonder if he's opened it up yet. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I haven't gotten a phone call asking any questions yet, so I bet it's still in the box. Yeah, much easier to tie your legs on after you tie your chenille on. So there's a little, little test for you. And we're going to half hitch, and I don't want to get my legs in my half hitch. Look like an amateur here. Okay. Now, we're going to take this chenille. 
And use the rotary function of the vice. Marcus just... von Bowman goes, that may just be the best my wife said so story yeah. ever. <laughs> hey, you gotta keep them happy. Okay, you just rotate and just make sure that you're not trapping your legs. And when we get up to the tie-in point of the legs, we're actually going to use the chenille to our advantage. And you can see where that underbody that we did is kind of building our taper for us. All right, so now I'm going to split the legs. Okay, now you can see I can use, once I get the chenille wrapped in between them, then I can use the chenille to help position my legs. So now I want to get in the front of this one. I want to get on the front of this one. And there you go. All right, now with my auto bobbin, boom, I'm right back in and ready to tie. And I'm going to whip this. Here, push pull, clip that out, get my legs set right. Okay, now you can trim these off if you want to. What I like to do is push all four of them down underneath the fly, kind of hold them together, come in here and clip them. And there you go. So there is your very quick impressionistic stonefly pattern. You can see how that how that lead, you can see where the taper starts right in here. So you got a little bit thinner and then it gets a little bit fatter and wider here. You got your two tails and you got your four legs. Very, very effective stone, stonefly pattern. Very easy to tie. Um, get your chenille tied on before you tie the legs on, um, which is what I didn't do. But you've got a tungsten bead and you've got about 10 to 12 laps of, wraps of 025 uh, lead. So very, very heavy. So this is another good one that will get your, um, get your rig down. I like, for anchor flies, I like bigger patterns. I like stone flies. I like big caddis. I like the waltz worm because you need a bigger overall profile to hide all the weight that you need to get underneath it. Um, so these are two great examples of, um, of two good flies that I fish all the time. All right. Like mm -hmm. Jason said, he's really excited for the auto bobbin. <laughs> Terry, Dude, you got to go to the closet and just get it out and start tying on it. Like it's quarantine. That's mm -hmm. an exception, right? <laughs> so. Oh, uh, can you get a material list? Uh, uh, yeah, I next. can, um, I can have a, I'll have a material list. And then when we put this up on YouTube, uh, middle of the week, it'll be, um, typically he's been putting it in the, the comments when he does the table of contents and, you know, from this time to this time we talked about this, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll put it up there. Um, Okay, anything else? Any other questions? Uh, Terry Landry said he almost used his credit on all bobbins. I... I was kind of hoping that that wasn't going to happen. Um, we we just literally just got through a run of a thousand bobbins, and we just finished um, assembling them. And for the first time since show season, our bobbin stock looks really, really good. Um, and and I, I was thinking like, all right, these guys are going to win, and somebody's going to get five hundred dollars worth of bobbins. And hey, if you do, <laughs> if you do, you do. But. Um, it's it's just one of those things. Super so. new to watching. How often do you guys go live? Every Sunday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Yep. What size hook were you using? That is a... Um, size 8. Mustad, size 8, 30... I can't remember the number. It was a 79.580. 79.580. 79.580. 3XL, size 8 streamer hook. Same same hook we used on the Waltz Worm as we did on the Stonefly. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we do this every um, every Sunday at uh, seven o'clock Eastern. Now, when when the ambassadors start doing it, um, we may have a, a bit of an issue with the time. Um, the best thing I can tell you to do is 
like and follow the Facebook page because we do a Facebook event um, invitation that we post and that will have all of the information on it. So I want to say yes, it's going to be 7 o'clock on Sunday, but sometimes that may change depending on who is actually doing the live event. Are you going to do any tube flies? Yes, tube flies are on the list. Actually, there's my... Not tonight, but... Not tonight, not tonight, no, but there's there's our tube fly attachment. One night will be, will be just tube flies, for sure. Okay, um, so Tyler and I got out on the water yesterday. Uh, we had a, a great day. We were up in central PA fishing with our buddy Brian Shoemaker of Susquehanna River Guides. And it's a piece of water that, that we're trying to, to learn. Uh, we're trying to learn the put-ins and the takeouts. For us, smallmouth is king, and I, to this day, I, I would if, if if I could only ever fish for one fish for the rest of my life, without a doubt, it would be smallmouth. I have other fit. I, we we did a northern pike trip last year. I love northern pike. Snakeheads are super super cool, but if I could only fish for one fish, it would be smallmouth. Um, so we we have a, a a Smith fly raft coming, and we're trying to learn this piece of water. So we drove up yesterday, met with Brian. Um, fished, we got to try out some of the new uh, TFO gear that they sent us um, as part of our ambassador deal. So we were fishing the, um, the Axiom 2, um, A2X rod. Um, we had a 7 and we had an 8 weight on, on the boat. I had the 7 weight up front and Tyler had the 8 weight in the back. And I, I like fishing a 7 for, um, for smallmouth. An 8 in my opinion is the rod is just too heavy to cast all day when you're in a when you're in a drift boat um, so I generally like a seven sevens fill the bill 90% of the time um, we did get some wind that was blowing up river yesterday and that is when the the inadequacy of a seven weight really shines through and you know we're trying to load up you know 60 to 80 foot cast and you're working on your haul and you haul forward and the line takes off like a rocket, and uh, the, you can see at the end the wind just kind of blows it back. So this was this wasn't a guided trip. This is what we call a row and go. So you had three guys in the boat, and you would alternate. You know, two guys would fish, and one guy would row. So we're switching back and forth um, positions in the boat. And when I got to the back of the boat, um, Tyler had his A2X set up back there, his eight weight A2X. And I grabbed it and I started fishing with it. And I'm going to tell you, the first thing you notice is the overall weight of the rod. If you didn't know any better, you would swear it is a six weight. I mean, the rod is literally that light. And the first cast that I loaded up in the wind, it just punched through like a rocket. Um, with a pretty big, like, yeah, we, we six were throwing, inch uh, We were throwing meat flies. We were throwing cha game changers. We were throwing uh, Viking Midge, which is a, a Mike, Mike Schmidt Sch pattern. Um, and and these, these were not small flies. And, I mean, this rod handled everything. So really, really happy with that rod. Um, speaking of the guide service, um, uh, Brian is going to be on the Articulate Fly podcast which is a podcast that, uh, that we help sponsor. It's done by our friend Marvin Cash. Uh, you can go into the, um, uh, the, the podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, um, the Apple podcast, subscribe. And, and Brian is really putting out some, uh, some good, um, good content. So uh, definitely check it out. I'm not sure when Brian's uh, actual podcast is going to drop, but if you're looking for... Um, some of PA's finest uh, smallmouth fishing. Brian guides primarily on the Susquehanna and the Little J. Um, he's been doing it for 30 years. Brian is, and, and if he was standing here, he wouldn't want me to say this, but he was Bob Clouser's protege, or one of Bob Clouser's protege. Um, and he is the premier guide service in that area right now. So if you have any questions or if you want to um, booking. You can look up Susquehanna Guide Service. You can contact us and I, we'll put you in touch with him. 
Uh, but if you're looking for a grade A smallmouth experience, it, it is fantastic. Yeah, when Bob Clouser comes home and goes smallmouth fishing, he's in Brian's boat. Yeah, yeah. When Bob so comes when, home, yeah, when one of the best smallmouth Brian. fishermen of all time goes smallmouth fishing, he's with him. Uh, we got questions, where are we fishing? And we are not allowed to say where we were fishing. We were fishing. We were sworn to secrecy. We were fishing in the water is where we were fishing. In on central a river. Pennsylvania. Yeah, in central PA. Keith goes, Tim, I hear you borrowed slash took Tyler's Impact 7 weight. Uh, that is my rod now, by the way. <laughs> um, and if you saw the um, if you saw the pictures, we were fortunate enough to get into some, some really solid, um, really, really solid smallmouth. Um, and I did catch a, probably a 24 inch, uh, walleye, which is the first walleye I have ever caught. Not first on a fly, literally first walleye I've ever caught. So his A2X8 weight, because I caught the big walleye on it, may be mine as well. So, uh, I'm really new to tying, but one issue I seem to run in to is I run out of space at the end to whip finish. Do you have any tips for that and any tips for someone new to fly tying? Okay, for your whip finish, um, yes, very, very, very simple tip. Don't go that close to the eye. So, you know, all the experienced tires are laughing, but we've all done it, and it, it's called rushing the head. And what I like to do, if you look at the diameter of the hook eye, so the, the round part at the end of the hook that you would tie your tippet through, that diameter, you want to leave at least that much space behind the eye of the hook. So one hook eye diameter behind the eye of the hook. Don't go into that area at all. Leave that area blank. And if you kind of discipline yourself to end, what a lot of people do is they end their fly at the back of the hook eye and then they have no area to put the head on. End your fly one hook eye diameter back from the back of the hook eye. Then you can build your head in that little area that you haven't disturbed your flies are going to look a lot cleaner, and your whip finish isn't going to be falling off the front of the fly. Uh, Michael Collier asked, do we use TFO's reels too? We do. Uh, we're fishing TFO's new, the BVK Seal Drag reel. Um, we've got several of them. Um, fantastic reel. Uh, the walleye pull drag. The couple of the smallmouth pull drags. My so, nice one pull drag. Yeah, so that they, they performed flawlessly. We used the BVK reels, now not the sealed drag, but the BVK reels on our pike trip last year, um, along with some A2, um, not the A2X, because it wasn't out yet, the A2 nine weights. Fantastic rod reel combination. So, yes, we do. Haven't done a lot of the stuff in the salt. Um, we just haven't been down yet. We will, and we'll continue to give updates as you know, things happen. Yeah, we've got Jake Jordan watching right yeah, now. And yeah. yeah, so if you want to talk saltwater yeah. and TFO gear, it, yeah. go ahead and talk to Jake. Yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't get any better than that, so. All right, so, where, where are we at on time? Uh, It's about 7.53. Oh, okay, let me cook through New this fly. One. New fly, <laughs> all right. Well, it was good. We had a couple of questions, and we kind of got off on a, on a tangent there, but that's that's what we're here for. That's and, just questions we won't answer at the end, so it all balances out. And again, as we say every week, um, if we miss your question, because the, the things start flying through here pretty quickly. Oh. Um, Have we fished near Sellins Grove, PA? Mm, well, not I mean, look up exactly it. where that is first. Yeah, not familiar with it. If we miss your question, just uh, just bear with us. I go back at the end, and I do answer or do my best to answer all of the questions that um that you guys uh that you guys submit so we have never fished that far north okay where is it I, i'm uh, not even familiar with where it's at fairly close to where the susquehanna splits oh okay all right yeah up that way okay so somebody had asked earlier about a curved shank hook and this is how so we got Anybody ever tied the TFO drift rod? Yes, I have two of them. I love them. Ed Hayes, no. <laughs> well, it, yeah. if a Norvice wasn't available, what would you tie with? Because someone wants to buy themselves new toys because they're a gear guy and they can't help themselves. Oh, if Norvice wasn't available. Yeah, if you couldn't tie on a Norvice, tie? what vice would you tie on? Oh, God. Um, Probably the one you and I were both tying on before yeah, we switched I, to Norvice. Before the whole Norvice thing happened, and, and if you don't know the story, I was making parts for Norm um, probably 12 years ago, and that's how the whole thing got started. But prior to that, I tied on a Regal, and I, I can't say a bad thing about it. Uh, great company. 
friends with the owner. We're friends with uh, the owner of, Ren of Renzetti as well. Um, the, the one thing about it is they won't do that. And it just, it is what it is. There's one vice in the world that'll do that. And the things that that opens up for us in the world of fly tying are phenomenal. Okay, so curve shank hook. We get this oh, question uh, all the time. What? Anyone ever fish with the drift rod? Yes. Yeah, we've got a couple of them. Yeah, we we've love got it. a couple. Love them. Love and them. Haven't, haven't set them up to do the two-handed thing yet, which we do a lot of two-handed uh, micro spay for trout. But for a straight-out nymphing rod, I actually um, did a blog post for TFO. It's up on their website. It's up on their Facebook as well. And I talk about the drift rod a little bit in that post. So, um, yeah, great rod. We love them. And as Keith pointed out, the man that designed the rods watching right now, Jason Randall. Yeah, there you go. Us. There you go. So, does it get any better than that? All right. I saw a TFO family tuning in tonight. Curve shanked hooks. So, it is impossible to get a, a hook with a curve shank to run perfectly flat because the axis of rotation is not straight. So, the way that I do it, and there's multiple ways to do it, I put the back of the hook and the eye of the hook level. And then I let the, the top or the center of the hook kind of float around when I spin it. And that's that's the best way that I've found to do this. All right, so this is a um, Tiamco 2457 size 12. I've got a 1 8 um, tungsten bead on there. And I need my... Your what? My lead, my 15,000. That's the 25. Where's the 15? I see a lot of... I don't see 15. No, I used, I had 15. Oh, it's That's right down here. It's right here. Okay. No. So, I'm going to put a little bit, 15 thousandths lead on here. So, I'm going to run the lead up through the eye of the hook. I got, you said it was 753. I got all flustered. All right. So, lead up through the eye of the hook. Put one wrap behind the bead. One, two, three, four, five, six, about six, seven wraps. Pinch that off. So we have a... Have we ever fished Idaho? No, we have not Negative. fished Idaho. But we're going to. And uh, we have a... If you want to fish up this way on the Susquehanna, let me know. Uh, a lot of good waiting in the summer. Careful. Because what's going to happen is you guys are going to say that, and then I'm going to show up to your house with my, uh, my little hobo pack and a fishing rod, and I'm going to move in. So careful what you wish for. All right, we're going to change color. So I've got my six to ten wraps of lead on. We've got a curve shank um, scud hook with a one eighth um, uh, tungsten bead. I got some lead underbody on there. I'm going to tie my thread on. Again, this is Semperfly um, Classic. This is eight dot. Tie my thread on. I'm going to build, and you can rotate it. It doesn't rotate quite as smooth, but I'm going to build my my taper. Brittany, Brittany Davenport says, bring it. We have room. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> careful. Because it's going to happen. Because you guys have trout there that we don't have here. Alright. I got two strands of this is Pearl Crystal Flash. This is my nuclear caddis. And if you remember the uh, hazardous waste shad fly that we did a couple of weeks ago, this is the same basic principle um, it's a good pat caddis pattern. I use it as an attractor, but again, this would be a, um, an anchor in a three, three nymph rig. Steven Siska, who's the one in Selensburg, PA, mm -hmm. says more the better 14 flat bottom with a 25 jet. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll be in contact. And then we have a question. Have we ever fished Bow River in Alberta? No. Uh, never fished Canada? No. Get up here. I gotta get this tied on. Okay. Now I'm going to just... Pull these down, and I'm going to work all the way down to my tie-in point. Steven goes, small mouth is the life. No better fish in the world Absolutely. to catch. Absolutely. And now this is going to be my tail. So I, I had two um, strands. I folded them over. That made, um, that made four. Then I folded them over again. That made eight. Then I folded them into the fly. So I should have about 16 little tail um, pieces there. Okay, I'm going to get up to the bead. Now for the body, same as my hazardous waste fly. This is a 12-pound test, high-vis chartreuse mono. Um, this spool I happen to get at Cabela's, but any, any high-vis mono will work for this. I'm going to tie this in. 
and I'm going to work it all the way down to my tie end point of my tail. Put a couple really good tight wraps there because you've got to take this mono and kind of bend it in a 90 degree. Now I'm going to work my way up. Now see how just by adding the materials you can see and the lead underneath I've already built my my taper for my body. Now I'm going to grab this Ooh, my tail piece is stuck on there. Get off of there. There we go. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to work my way around the, the point of the hook. And you want to be careful to get these get these wraps right next to each other. This is going to give you some good segmentation and it gives you a real cool effect while it's in the water. You'll see how you walk that right, those wraps are going right next to each other. You walk it right up the shank of the hook. Okay. Now with my auto bobbin, right back in and ready to tie. Now typically I do three behind and three in front. With this mono, I repeat that three times because you really got to make sure that this stuff is tied down. Now, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to grab my fine point scissors, clip that off, half hitch it, and then I'm going to go on the cradle, and I'm going to get just a little bit of Hair's Ear Plus in black. Just going to do a little collar here, I'm going to tease this out. And we're going to touch the dubbing to the thread, spin the vise, and walk the dubbing right up onto the to the thread. I'm going to tighten this up. Don't need a whole lot. Reach underneath here, right behind the bead. I'm just going to wrap my collar on. Okay. And I'll do two three-turn whips on this guy. And that's it. That's O'Neill's Nuclear Caddis. So it's a great, great attractor pattern. It's a great caddis fly, and it's a great fly for a uh, for an anchor pattern in a um, in a three uh, three nymph rig. So there you go. We did the waltz worm. We did the um, the the chenille stone fly, and we did O'Neill's Nuclear Caddis. You guys have any questions on that? We'll hang out for a little bit. Um, which thread do you feel is better for the dubbing to grab on? I like that. Um, we've been tying a lot with that that Semperfly, um, the classic um, six ot and eight ot. Um, I really like it. It grabs the dubbing very well. You can dub on anything. And was it last week or the week before? I dubbed on copper wire. I mean, I literally had copper wire in the bobbin and I dubbed on it. So you can dub on any thread that's out there. Um, but I do like that that Semperfly uh, classic, the three and and mostly the eight dot. All right, anything else? So, do we ever build rods? No, no I've never built a rod. No, I, I build a lot. We've of barely things. got enough time to tie anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, rod, rod building is is I I've just it's not anything that's that's ever really attracted me and and I, I look at it and I'm kind of like I, I get it I get why people do it but my, my thought is can I do anything better than say TFO or you know Loomis or Sage or any of the the top rod manufacturers out there probably not so just let them do it and that frees me up to do you know make real cool fly tying vices and tie flies and fish so but i mean if jason wants any input on the next rod he designs he can call us i mean it oh i can tell yeah. you how to build it. <laughs> I, I can tell you what i want i just don't uh i just don't do it so. not saying it's going to be any good information but i'll ha i'll do my best yeah. <laughs> all right guys um so uh, let's see here. March Madness. Thank you guys very much, Jock. Congratulations. Uh, fantastic fly. Uh, the question or the answer to the question of who invented the Waltz worm and, and where did he invent it? 
uh, Walt Young, and it is Spring Creek or Central Pennsylvania. Um, the Fly Lords giveaway Tyler talked about. I think we're going to repost the, the rules and stuff on our Instagram so that people know exactly what they have to do. Because if you don't tag everybody and, and, and share and all that kind of stuff, you're not eligible. So you want to make sure that you read the rules and you do it right. Um, the, uh, we, we fished some of the TFO gear. Um, oh, I did, I did forgot to mention, I put a new blog post up, uh, on Friday. It's Braden's article in, um, fly fishing or fly tying journal, fly fishing and fly tying journal. Great article. Um, I'm trying to blog once a week. I, I missed it the week before last. Um, I, I got an idea for one that I'm going to put up this week. Um, so, you know, check that out. It's another way to stay in touch with us. And, you know, we're doing the Facebook live. So have, um, have you, uh, if you have any questions, um, let us know. We'll hang out here a little bit and, uh, and then we're going to sign off. I've seen a Norvice ambassador that had a thread keeper on the brass of the bobbin. Is that something you sell or something they came up with? They bought it from a guy in the UK named Mike Johnson. That he's, he's probably talking about Brittany and Brian because I think uh, they have them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so check out... Um, hey, Tyler, you're going to love the new TFO Stealth coming out this summer. Check out uh, Mike Johnson. I know he's a member of the Norvice Tires Facebook page, which we had a couple of, um, of, of beginners here tonight. That is a great, great um, resource for you. Um, check it out. A lot of good people there. We post on it regularly. Um, a lot of people willing to help out. So check out the Norvice uh, Tires Facebook page. And I know uh, Mike Johnson is on there. He's the gentleman that makes the thread keepers, and you can contact him through that. But, yeah, Jason, as soon as I'm allowed to place an order for one, we'll have probably two of them, if not more, between the two of us. All right. Any other questions? Let it go for a little bit, just because yep. there's there's definitely a delay. I sat down in the chair, started talking before I could see myself on the screen. <laughs> Not as bad as it used to be. At least it didn't cut out this time. Last week, the, the thing cut out. Stop. <laughs> I mean, if it cuts out now, we're yeah, just if done. It cuts, but if it cuts out now, we're signing off. So, Not logging back on for no questions. No. Your brother didn't ask anything tonight. No, he didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, and I've been waiting for his... Uh, I've been waiting something. for his uh, his question that he um, that that he he thinks about all Sunday to ask me. Thanks, everyone. All right, guys, we're gonna sign off. Thank all you, right. guys. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to get in touch with you. Have a good week.